quite a mood swing. One moment it's Hosanna, praise the King. Next, it's crucify him. One moment high as a kite, waving palms, singing and dancing, so excitedly the very stones seem to cry out. Next, it's down in the dumps, full of anxiety and foreboding, looking for a scapegoat. First, garments are laid before him to honour him. Then they're stripped off him to humiliate him. One moment they're following and committing to die for him. Next, they're fleeing and denying him. Israel has all the symptoms of bipolar disorder. And which Israel are we? Elation and depression, highs and lows, virtues and vices, beauty and the beast. They are the human condition. Christians are no exception. We love God and we blame God. We are generous and we are stingy, hopeful and despondent, caring and hating, sinners and saints. These things are in us all. Our community too is bipolar. It still looks to the church to teach and inspire, heal and care, advocate and liberate. All the while, some are seeking that same church's extinction. The same community that says you can expect nothing good from those guys is disillusioned whenever our church falters. Palm Sunday is about that tension. The tension, even contradiction, in every human heart, every community, even the church. The tension between the old Adam and the new, the Adam of Genesis and the Adam, Jesus, of the Gospels. The two fighting for our hearts and souls. Of course, both Adams were born without sin. Both had gifts of intellect, freedom and love. Both were beloved of God. Each modelled the other. Yet in so many ways, Jesus is the inversion of Adam. If the first came from the earth, the second was from heaven. The one acceded to the devil's lies, the other resisted such temptations. The former disobeyed God, whereas the latter was obedient, even unto death. Adam took from the tree for his own ambition, while Jesus gave himself to the tree for our salvation. The one put on clothes to cover his shame, the other shed his so as to take on our shame. As St Paul taught, sin entered the world through the first Adam, salvation through the second, death through the former, resurrection 
through the latter. By the first was paradise lost. From the lips of the second, we are promised, you will be with me in paradise. Such contrasts are unsurprising, given that so much of Christ's mission overturned ordinary human expectations, moods and priorities. Today we saw this Messiah arrive not on a glorious steed, but a mere colt. His courtiers, not a select aristocracy, but a multitude of deplorables, as this world judges. This is Isaiah's suffering servant, very different to the kings of the earth. And before he goes to his death, he reminds his disciples that unlike any earthly politics, the greatest amongst them must act as the least, the leader as the one who serves. Walking with Jesus, we've come to expect such inversions of power and expectation. And yet they are forever challenging. Ours is not a culture that valorises forgiveness, self-sacrifice, humility, obedience. No, it rewards indignation, self-serving, power and autonomy. But on Palm Sunday, we recall that the one clothed in majesty and splendour assumed our nakedness, weakness, mortality. Only then, as Paul's hymn celebrates, was he raised up and made Lord of all beings in the heavens, on the earth and in the underworld. Every year, Palm Sunday, with all its shifts of mood and contrasting humanity, returns to unnerve us, subvert us, challenge us deeply. Whatever our present temper, it opens for us a holy week in which grace transforms us more and more from the first Adam into the second. A week for stripping off the garments of our sins and laying them at the Lord's feet. A week to sing with all our voice, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy Week offers one more chance for us to plead, Jesus, Remember me and to hear those wonderful words of absolution and hope. Father, forgive them and see you in paradise. <laughs>